Welcome to another round of Charleston Battery Weekly here with OSG Sports and the SDH Network. It is Open Mic Show. What we mean by that is, as always, it is uh, Mike Kelleher joining us uh, for the A Block for his round of Special K. And then the coach, Mike Anhauser, gets to be in the B Block to take a look at the regular season. So it's Mike, Mike, you and me. Thanks for hanging out for Charleston Battery Weekly here. OSG Sports, SDH Networks, Mike Kelleher and Special K coming up just around the corner. Stick and stay. We'll be right back. If you've been hurt in a car wreck, contact my friend Steve Apolinski of Apolinski and Associates. He's been representing individuals for over 30 years throughout Georgia and Alabama. Email him at steve at aa-legal.com or call him 24-7 at 404-377-9191. The initial consultation is free. We know that every driver is different, and a one-size policy does not fit all. That's why Country Financial offers a variety of discounts, so you get the coverage you need and the savings you deserve. From good driver to good student, multi-policy to multi-car, we've got a discount to suit every driver. Call Jason Wright at 678-568-6871 today to see what you could save. On Facebook at Jason Wright Agency or by phone at 678-568-6871. Discounts vary by state. Policies issued by Country Mutual Insurance Company, Country Preferred Insurance Company, or Country Casualty Insurance Company. Bloomington, Illinois. If you've been hurt in a car wreck, contact my friend Steve Apolinski of Apolinski and Associates. He's been representing individuals for over 30 years throughout Georgia and Alabama. Email him at steve at aa-legal.com or call him 24-7 at 404-377-9191. The initial consultation is free. We know that every driver is different, and a one-size policy does not fit all. That's why Country Financial offers a variety of discounts, so you get the coverage you need and the savings you deserve. From good driver to good student, multi-policy to multi-car, we've got a discount to suit every driver. Call Jason Wright at 678-568-6871 today to see what you could save. On Facebook at Jason Wright Agency or by phone at 678-568-6871. Discounts vary by state. Policies issued by Country Mutual Insurance Company, Country Preferred Insurance Company, or Country Casualty Insurance Company. Bloomington, Illinois. Welcome back to Charleston Battery Weekly. It is time to catch up with Mike Kelleher for our weekly dose of Special K. Mike, thanks for hanging out with us as always to start off the show. Hi, John. Nice to be here. All right. So uh, I guess this is uh, Calculus 101 that we're going to get into to start off here with uh, the math that's involved with how things are. Uh, Obviously, with the Loudon game that uh, will not be made up, you'll end up the season with one less match. Uh, What's the latest? Is there a latest? Yeah, um, obviously very disappointed about the, the result last night. Things were very much in, in their hands, you know, with, with 30 minutes to go. In, in terms of, of the outcome for the season, uh, I am, I'm expecting to hear from the USL later today. Nothing was confirmed prior to the game yesterday. Um, obviously, points per game has been mentioned and, and, you know, there's no way we can catch Tampa in points per game. But, but that, that's been mentioned. That's not final. Um, so we're waiting to hear what, what the USL um, are going to advise us or, or, or is going to you know, tell us what, what's going to happen should we win in Tampa on, on Saturday. I was going to say we'll get into the, the Tampa match here in a little bit, but uh, obviously kind of keeping an eye on things. The, the guys had the, the inter-squad stuff to try to keep themselves sharp before they went down to, to play the game at Ricardo Silva. What was it like having a – a weekend where you were only going up against yourself and not an opponent. Yeah, difficult, John, to be honest. You know, we, we, we've talked about in recent weeks about momentum and, and uh, how well the team were playing. So, so to suddenly not have your home game and, 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 you know, arguably or a game that we were likely to win, um, it, it suddenly puts you off of that routine. And, and, and I think the idea was to keep the team ticking over, to play a game amongst themselves, try and make it as, as game-like as possible, which, which is not always easy. Um, you know, there was a level of competitiveness in the game, but at the same time, um, it, it was no substitute for, for playing, you know, as we were supposed to play loud. And so, so yeah, it, it was perhaps not the best preparation. Though on the other side, we, you know, we had plenty of time to prepare for Miami. So, so can't, you know, kind of it both ways. And obviously going up, uh, discussing the game against the Miami FC. Uh, hot start, but then thing you get out to the lead, but then seeming like uh, 48th, 50th minute, things start to go back and forth and then it eventually goes Miami's way. 
Yeah, I don't know if you, you got a chance to watch the game last night, John. It, it, it was incredibly open. Uh, it was end to end at one point, and, and you know, for, from you know, looking at looking at where we were, we, we should have been in control of the game. We're two 0 up. We're three one up. And, and but but it, it remained incredibly open, and, and you know, in previous weeks, you don't know what you're going to get with Miami, and, and we, we've all known they've got talented players, and and, and they came good, and, and you know, we, we we couldn't put the game to bed, unfortunately. It, it, it was an exciting game for the neutral, and, and there was you know there was lots of goal mouth opportunities and lots of goal mouth action, but unfortunately, you know, it, it wasn't the characteristic of a Charlton Battery team. Uh, that, that we saw last night, who, who has hardly let a goal in in the last few few months. And I guess that carries me over to two separate questions. You know, one, we've always referred to the Miami FC as, I guess, the, the Forrest Gump box of chocolates that you have in, in USL Championship because you don't know what you're going to get. We've referred to them as Team Chaos. Was it as chaotic, chaotic as it sounded? It seems, I mean, even, look, uh, we, we've spoken briefly this morning, uh, you, you know, the first half, although we, you know, I think we came out incredibly strong. We, we had a number of chances early on, and and and, and it showed the you know the confidence that was in our team. And, and we, the, but there were opportunities in that first half that Miami were getting in behind us, and I think they got called up offside a few times. But but they were stretching us, and 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 and, and it was there was definitely warning signs there, even though going in two 0 at half time. So it's a chaotic. I don't know if that's the right word, you know, uh, but but they, they certainly were. You know, they, they were they were certainly a lot stronger than when we last played them, and, and certainly a lot, there was something about them last night that, that they, they, you know they had a never say say die attitude, even though we we led at two goals on two separate occasions, but they you know they, they, they kept coming back, and, and that's you know there's there's more to come from that team if that's the group of players that will be there next year for them. Well, and I think that when you look at Miami early on in the season, because of the, the struggles that they had, even from a scheduling standpoint, you've got a veteran side like that. And I think that with a veteran side, it, it takes a while for them to get to full song. And we kind of figured they would improve as the season went along. How different a group was it from the, the last match than, say, the previous times you went up against them? Um, yeah, look, I think we 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 certainly started the game better than the last time we was in Miami. You know, I think I think we talked before. You know, the the, the last home game against Miami, we played very well. We, we we put the game to bed. It we talked about professional performance. But but when we were in Miami, you know, you can blame the turf, you blame the travel, all the sorts of stuff. You know, we we certainly started a lot better last night. Um, but but there are yeah, they, they, they have, they've got some good players. We, we've known that, and and, and they are improved. You know, they have improved. You know, week on week out. So, so it's it's no surprise really that, that there was a performance there. I think the only surprise is that they've been out of, they've been out of the competition for some time, and and they're still, I suppose, that's that's professional players. They're still willing to they're playing for their pride at this point. I think it was 15 matches in 64 days or something like that. Uh, all right, so uh, let's get into some of the other fun stuff from the weekend, I guess. From 30,000 feet, how much of a chance have you had to, to look at everything else going on around the USL Championship as we get ready to the playoff structure? Uh, you, you try and keep an eye on it. Obviously, there was some big story or, or a big story last night that, that's caught the, the, the global uh, news, soccer news, should we say. Um, so, so, yeah, you've certainly seen other stuff that's going on. Um, North Carolina, obviously, is another interesting one. Probably similar. Could be in a, in, in a worse-off situation than ourselves, having missed, missed a, a game. In recent weeks, so so yeah, keeping an eye on things and, and and you know also plotting where who and where we will be playing in the coming weeks. And uh, this is just a personal observation. You you mentioned the situation out in San Diego. I think that uh, San Diego loyal, what they did, I think that it speaks to the stand up kind of a guy that Landon Donovan is, where you have something happen with your squad a week before with the game against LA Galaxy two, then after saying what you say publicly after that incident, then something happens the following night and, uh, you know, San Diego sticks to, sticks to their beliefs and they had the discussion and they, they walked off at halftime with a 3-1 lead. And as of right now, as you and I are talking, another matter for the USL is that their season's over. I mean, they were eliminated. If math stays the way that it is, obviously the USL can change things. But as you and I are talking right now, they stood up for their beliefs did what they did last night, and I think it speaks to who Landon Donovan is. But yeah, John, look, I think uh, I'm, I'm not a political person. I'm not, you know, um, I, 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 obviously I like the game. I, I love the sport. But I think you've got to commend them 
to standing up for their belief and stand up for what they've said. We, we've all, I think, you know, in recent weeks, months, we've put statements out, we've put things out on our websites, think, you know, Twitter, uh, social media. But, but that's all very well putting it in writing, but, 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 but walking the walk, uh, to coin a phrase, is, is what he's done and what the team has done. And, and I think it's got to be commended. It's, they've drawn a line in the sand and, and, and people are saying no more. You know, there's been lots of things that have happened in sport in our society that that that, that aren't right, and, and and people are saying, you know, well, it's, you know, you, I think you you can saw the other the opposing coach, you know, how long you've been in soccer, and it doesn't mean it's right. It doesn't mean it's always happened. Is it right? So, I think for what they've done, they've got to be commended. I'd like to see the league be strong about it, and and if we're going to continue on and, and be a better society and be a better sport then we all need to live by those standards and, and, and raise the standards and things that we thought were, were, were jokes or uh, whatever it may be, sarcasm or whatever, sometimes offend people. And we've got to understand that and we've got... What's it like to see your guys walk the walk in that same manner? Uh, it's it's um, incredibly... Um, I don't know if humbling is too strong a word, but but it but it it shows that they it's more than a sport to them. You, you see the young men and, and they want to do things. They want to they want to make a statement. They want to be make a difference. I think and and, and that's you see you know and, and that's up to them to do that and how they do that and 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 we'll we'll buy them and, and and provide you know say as as your employers as as your um, you know, your work colleagues, we, we support you. And, and, and again, that's back to what I said earlier. I'm not, I'm not a political person, but, but I think there's some things that we need that, that aren't necessarily right in our society. And, and what can we do to make the future generations have a better place to live? All right. Last question for you this week. And thanks for, for uh, coming on as always. You, you know that this is the West Ham portion of the show. Yeah. And uh, four goals in the back of the net. I know that you and I were thinking it might have been a, a really long start in those first seven, but four in the back of the net last time. out. You're referring, obviously, to the Wolves game and not the Everton Cup match yesterday. Because yeah. I had a, I had a, I had a twelve hours yesterday watching football. I tell you that. But <laughs> but, but no, the, the Wolves game, obviously, yeah, it was incredible. It was it was it wasn't expected. Wolves are a team that that have done fantastically well in the last couple of years. West Ham and all the issues and problems that have been off the pitch and and so on to put that performance together, I think was 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 incredible. And and, and it shows that, that there is a team there. That's got the potential, you know, obviously to stay in the Premier League, but maybe do a little bit more. But but that all came crashing down yesterday in, in usual West Ham style, um, <laughs> away at Everton in the Cup, and and you know there was there were some Twitter comments, a few you know, typical of West Ham to win their first trophy in forty years, but no fan can go to the game. But 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 that obviously won't be the case in the League Cup this year. So but no, um, winning at home to Wolves, great opportunity now to push on from there. We have Leicester this weekend, which again is another tough one. And, and, and maybe let's see if we, the, the starting eleven can come back from, from the league games and, 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 in, and push on from the, where we played against. Leicester, tough at the back under uh, Brendan Rodgers. But uh, with, with Brendan, we've seen that he has a history of wanting to sprint out to get as many points in the bank as possible. And then they kind of fade toward the end of the year. And we saw that last year. And I know that a lot of folks were wondering how Lester could be this year. So uh, with everything, all things being equal, this is a tough opportunity for West Ham going up against a very solid defensive side. Okay, so then let me ask you this. If you were a defender, how do you defend Jamie Vardy? <laughs> Drop off. <laughs> you can never <laughs> beat him in a race. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's what I think they had a great team a few years ago when they won the league and catching teams on the counter attack with, with someone like Vardy and his pace. Uh, you, you can't give him space behind. He's going to capitalise on that. He's obviously getting older, but he's still he's still got it. Um, I think you just got to give him less space to play in behind you, and and you know that, that, that he'll still have an opportunity to get in. But but um, you know, if I'm a defender playing against him, I'm, I'm in trouble. But, but that's. Uh, that's for another, another day. <laughs> All right. As always, Mike, thanks for hanging out with us for another round of Special K. A very full weekend of football coming up this weekend with the battery going up against Tampa Bay, last game of the regular season. West Ham going up against Leicester. We'll catch up with you next week. Thanks, John. Show continues after this. More Charleston Battery Weekly. SDH Network's OSG Sports will be back in two and two. If you've been hurt in a car wreck, Contact my friend Steve Apolinski of Apolinski & Associates. 
He's been representing individuals for over 30 years throughout Georgia and Alabama. Email him at steve at aa-legal.com or call him 24-7 at 404-377-9191. The initial consultation is free. We know that every driver is different, and a one-size policy does not fit all. That's why Country Financial offers a variety of discounts, so you get the coverage you need and the savings you deserve. From good driver to good student, multi-policy to multi-car, we've got a discount to suit every driver. Call Jason Wright at 678-568-6871 today to see what you could save. On Facebook at Jason Wright Agency or by phone at 678-568-6871. Discounts vary by state. Policies issued by Country Mutual Insurance Company, Country Preferred Insurance Company, or Country Casualty Insurance Company, Bloomington, Illinois. If you've been hurt in a car wreck, contact my friend Steve Apolinsky of Apolinsky and Associates. He's been representing individuals for over 30 years throughout Georgia and Alabama. Email him at steve at aa-legal.com or call him 24-7 at 404-377-9191. The initial consultation is free. We know that every driver is different, and a one-size policy does not fit all. That's why Country Financial offers a variety of discounts, so you get the coverage you need and the savings you deserve. From good driver to good student, multi-policy to multi-car, we've got a discount to suit every driver. Call Jason Wright at 678-568-6871 today to see what you could save. On Facebook at Jason Wright Agency or by phone at 678-568-6871. Discounts vary by state. Policies issued by Country Mutual Insurance Company, Country Preferred Insurance Company, or Country Casualty Insurance Company, Bloomington, Illinois. Welcome back, B Block Charleston Battery Weekly. Time to catch up with the man who is on the touchline and has been for a very, very long time part of the fabric of the Charleston Battery for his yearly visit here on the show. It is the head coach, Mike Anhauser. Augie, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's good to be back. All right. So when you look at this season, the the stops and the starts and keeping an eye on players and and everything that has gone into this season in the USL championship, how much of a challenge has it been for you and the staff? Yeah. I, you know, once we were up and rolling, it, it's been, you know, a little, it, it's been pretty much the same except on the road where you have, you know, even now walking into the hotel, you still wear your mask and everything. And it, it just makes it a little more difficult. The buses, the trips, all of that, but the games and all that other than, you know, I, I hate to say it, the fans, but some places like in Tampa, you know, tomorrow they'll have about a thousand, I think a thousand or twelve hundred fans for the game. Um, so it's all starting to come back. But at the beginning was tough. So what you asked, that was difficult where you were training and you didn't know what was going to happen. You didn't know when you were going to play. And, you know, it's difficult for players to handle just training every day and not knowing that they're going to be able to play games. So that was the, probably the biggest challenge for us as a staff and trying to keep an eye on them and make sure that they're taking care of themselves yeah. and, and all of this, yeah. all of the discipline that goes on both in an athletic sense and in a personal sense, obviously that played yeah. it too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I mean, you, you've pro- you've watched from afar with all the other teams and just the little issues that come up and, you know, a scare here or there or a test or a positive or a, a player or a person, somebody has been around somebody and every team's gone through it. You know, um, and that's the challenge you've had through that. So it is off the field has been very difficult for these guys also to, you know, take their time and really understand what you have to do to make sure none of the none of the things that could cause an issue to the team and to the club and to themselves personally, you know, because if something happened to them, they're out for 14 days and it's just like being injured and it it was difficult. So that was something thrown in there. And again, it, it, it happened all over and it was something that we had to deal with all the time. What did you think when the USL uh, championship came up with the idea of the group stage where it's basically turning it into this world cup like group stage sprint where you've got to be one of the top two. What did you think about that idea? Well, I mean, from what we, you know, have had where it's you're playing home and away with everybody in the Eastern conference. um, It was a big change because now, yeah, you're in a group. And of course you look at it, you're like Tampa, Miami, Atlanta, you're going to play them four times. And, that went back to the old days, you know, when I was a little younger coaching and, uh, you know, we were playing Charlotte four times. We were playing North Carolina four times and uh, Wilmington four times. You remember those days? It's like, um, so it was a little bit like that. So it was, it was different for us and especially for the new, the players that are playing now, but anybody who's been around and like for myself, it was like, oh, okay, let's treat this as our old division, you know, 
games, and you have to do very well in that. And we tried to set it up, like you said, almost like a World Cup. You have to do well in your group. And if you can beat every team in your group, which you know we've been fortunate to do that, and you can take the points away from them, you're going to have success. So we tried to treat it how it was. We looked at it from the positive saying, okay, look, we got to play them four times and home and away twice with both, you know, sorry, both teams, all three teams. And uh, these guys have been fantastic. Uh, the players were great. And our group was very difficult. You know, some people might look from the outside and say it looked easy. But, you know, I mean, you saw it from Miami actually did have a very good team. And then unfortunately, they just, you know, never got click in there. Uh, unfortunately for us, it was, uh, it was Wednesday night in the second half and they started clicking pretty well with some of the, their players that they didn't have, you know, during most of the season. When you look at all of these teams that you're playing over and over and over again, uh, is it, you know, how can you, the game planning, I guess, is what I'm trying to get at. Is it different? Is there anything in the back of the playbook for matchups three and four, or is it just like, yeah, okay, I know who you are. Let's just go out and play. It's, it is, uh, you know, today we, Tampa, this will be our fourth game and, you know, we're, we're going to try to do most of the same things we've done unless the other team throws something different, okay. which Miami, Miami did. They, they usually play a four in the back and, you know, play a four, three, three. And against us at their place, they went with three in the back. Now, if Tampa comes out tomorrow in a four, we're not, I mean, you're, you're prepared but it would be different. So we've seen them and I don't think they're going to change. And we've played them now three times and it is, it becomes really more of a, a chess game between what you've done in the past. It's like, if you and I played chess, I know your little moves and I got to make sure I stay away from them or I have to do something just a little different. And we try to, you try to tweak something maybe with a player here or where, you know, like even with us, Zico Lewis or, you know, our guys in certain positions, you try to maneuver them and take advantage of those same situations. And again, with Tampa, who we're playing, we've played them. We know that we have to get at that back three, which a lot of other teams haven't done all season. And we, we have to pressure them and put them under pressure and, and even offensively put them under pressure a little more than they have been. And, you know, so it, it, it's, it is, it's just little details, like you said. It was, it's something you don't change a lot but you have to be prepared to adjust little things and try to get a little something different, throw a little something in there, you know, just maybe a player who's got a little speed that that game we've done it. And we, we've been fortunate to be able to do that. You know, it's not, we're not the same. I haven't really started the same lineup versus each team in the front four, you know, I've, there's been the same players in the middle and then maybe in the back, but we got to be solid back there. So that's an, It's a great point. It's, it's been intriguing. Um, but it is something where I know they know us tonight and it comes down to the players on the field really stepping up and what do they do to make something different uh, from a more physical standpoint because you do know their strengths and weaknesses so well. Mike Anhauser, head coach of the Charleston Battery, hanging out with us for another couple of minutes here on Charleston Battery Weekly. And you mentioned the back for Tampa Bay and the lumberjack at the back is somebody that you're obviously very, very familiar with as well from his time under your tutelage. Does that, you know, that kind of familiarity, it's like, okay, that's another something that I can file away with uh, in, in my, in my Rolodex as to how to attack a team when yeah. you have familiar faces like that. Is that something else that helps out? Yeah. Yeah, no, you hit it. It's, you have to remember when you have somebody, you, you know, all their strengths and, you know, hopefully all their weaknesses also. So, uh, you know, you're mentioning Forrest and he is, I mean, I, I can tell you if we don't match up with him on free kicks and get into his body, he is going to put the ball in the back of the net and he did it for us. He does it for Tampa. He did it for Cincinnati. He, he's done it everywhere he's been. Now, if you can get at him with maybe a little guy, a quick player, uh, you know, pushing him to try to defend one V one, he, you know, but then he understands that and we're, we're trying to take advantage of uh, hopefully a positive for us. And that, that, that is something in it. Those are the little details you're just talking about. And we were talking about that make a big difference. So it, it is enjoyable. And you also see the growth of the player. If, you know, he's, he's adjusted and, and how much better he's doing with his, you know, the passing and the, you know, he's always been able to hit a great diagonal and those players and that, but that's it. You got to know, a player's strengths and weaknesses. And we try to get our players to understand that too. And it's, it does, it has helped us in a couple games. 
And again, luckily he hasn't hurt us yet, but you know, like tomorrow you, know, you never know if he, hopefully he doesn't put in a header on the back post going over the top of our guys, but uh, we know him and he knows us a little bit too for some of our players. So it works both ways. What you mentioned the fans that are going to be at Al Lang for the, the season, yeah. the regular season finale. What's it been like over the last handful of matches at Patriots point to see uh, numbers gradually increase. You've had, you know, a hundred, 150, that kind of stuff. What's it been yep. like to see fans come into Patriots point to see you play here toward the end of the season? It, it, it is. It's tremendous. I wish you had, sorry. I still couldn't get the video, but it's, you see my face, the players just even having that 150. And I think we were going to get up to 500, which was, that was a little disappointing not being able, able to have that next home game. And, you know, hopefully if, you know, we, we get in the right situation and we might get in a playoff game and if there's a thousand people. It's unbelievable. Um, and this team's playing well. Um, and when you're playing well and scoring goals and you're exciting and you want the people to see it, everybody can see it online, you know, ESPN plus and all that, and you know, all the online video, but it, it's great to have those fans. When you do something well, they, they cheer for you. When the referee makes a mistake, they're on them. The other team, you know, dives or does something that gets in there it's not just the players and hearing just us in the background or the coaches shouting and yelling like we probably shouldn't sometimes uh you hear the fans doing it and that's that's what makes it so special is when you get a play in front of them so it's been great and it's been fantastic even with the few numbers that we have had and it's been great seeing it grow little by little in the last couple games well, Augie, once again, it's great to catch up with you and get the lowdown from your perspective on one of the more trying seasons across the board, regardless of sport, but to, to get your perspectives on everything there in Charleston. Thanks for hanging out with us once again here on Battery Weekly. Good luck this weekend against Tampa Bay. We'll be keeping an eye on stuff here in the group and heading toward the playoffs. Thanks again for hanging out. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Okay. We'll come back. We'll put a bow on a show. You're listening to Charleston Battery Weekly, OSG Sports, SDH Networks. We'll be right back after this. If you've been hurt in a car wreck, contact my friend Steve Apolinsky of Apolinsky and Associates. He's been representing individuals for over 30 years throughout Georgia and Alabama. Email him at steve at aa-legal.com or call him 24-7 at 404-377-9191. The initial consultation is free. We know that every driver is different, and a one-size policy does not fit all. That's why Country Financial offers a variety of discounts, so you get the coverage you need and the savings you deserve. From good driver to good student, multi-policy to multi-car, we've got a discount to suit every driver. Call Jason Wright at 678-568-6871 today to see what you could save. On Facebook at Jason Wright Agency or by phone at 678-568-6871. Discounts vary by state. Policies issued by Country Mutual Insurance Company, Country Preferred Insurance Company, or Country Casualty Insurance Company. Bloomington, Illinois. If you've been hurt in a car wreck, contact my friend Steve Apolinsky of Apolinsky and Associates. He's been representing individuals for over 30 years throughout Georgia and Alabama. Email him at steve at aa-legal.com or call him 24-7 at 404-377-9191. The initial consultation is free. We know that every driver is different, and a one-size policy does not fit all. That's why Country Financial offers a variety of discounts, so you get the coverage you need and the savings you deserve. From good driver to good student, multi-policy to multi-car, we've got a discount to suit every driver. Call Jason Wright at 678-568-6871 today to see what you could save. On Facebook at Jason Wright Agency or by phone at 678-568-6871. Discounts vary by state. Policies issued by Country Mutual Insurance Company, Country Preferred Insurance Company, or Country Casualty Insurance Company, Bloomington, Illinois. All right, time to record the ending in three. Time to put a bow in yet another show for Charleston Battery Weekly. Once again, reminder, ESPN Plus is the place to watch the USL Championship all season long. Remember Charleston Battery going up against Tampa Bay this weekend for the regular season finale. Obviously, the interview that we had with Mike Kelleher, uh, still trying to figure out how things are going to, to be when it comes to points in the postseason and seedings and wins and all that kind of stuff. And when we get our updates, we'll let you know what's going on there as well. CharlestonBattery.com for all the information that you need when it comes to anything and everything Charleston Battery. Go to the website and get your merch, the new merch for 2020, and uh, keep an eye on everything there as well. Regular season finale, once again, Charleston Battery, Tampa Bay. The Battery have had Tampa Bay's number all season long. 
So we'll keep an eye on what's going on here for the regular season finale in the USL Championship and get you ready for the postseason. For both mics, I'm stereo mics this week, Mike Kelleher, Mike Anhauser, and for you, I'm just John. Play it safe, everybody. Enjoy the games. We'll see you next week.